Hello, Dr. Joseph Martin. Merlin, the best archetype for our times and probably for a long time to come. Now, some of you know probably some of Merlin because there's been so many TV shows and movies about him and the BBC Welsh series that came out just a couple of years ago that went on for quite a few seasons, and we all miss it, don't we? Who is Merlin, and what is the Merlin archetype for our times? He certainly is the best love historical and archetypal figure probably of all time. Now, in historical terms, he was Welsh, you know, the last of the great Celts in terms of the last and greatest of the Druid uh, magi or magicians, if you like, and the time of King Arthur and the Round Table. So we're speaking of the 500s, the 600s, uh, the time when uh, there was the war with the Romans who were taking over the British Isles and so on. Now, Merlin was... Uh, a seer, a prophet, a seeker, a bard, a truth speaker, a magician, a white magician. He was a servant and a tutor for King Arthur, and he was an advisor, an educator, a teacher. Uh, really, you know, a man of many, if not all, talents of what it means to be divinely human, which is probably one of the reasons why he's the best and greatest archetype for our times and all times. Now, let's just get into a bit about his life. Uh, as a, When he was born, they say that he was the son of the devil by the father. Uh, sort of it's a, a bit of an unknown there, but they say his father was on the dark side. Of course, this is sounding more and more like Star Wars, isn't it? And his mother was a nun and gave birth to him, so without knowing of the father, we're into the whole wonderful archetypal storyline of the hero orphan warrior magician that is part of the story of many of the great spiritual teachers and leaders of profound world religions now, including Isis and the son of Isis and, of course, Mother Mary herself, blessed be her soul. And so, nonetheless, when he was a young early teenager, Merlin, or Emrys, as he's called in the Welsh way, he was uh, brought to King Vortigern, and he, there were two sleeping uh, dragons that were causing trouble under the earth, under the king's castle. And Merlin said he knew what to do to wake up the dragons and to deal with them in the most appropriate way. One of them was a white dragon, and the other one is a red dragon. Now, let's just look at the spiritual and psychological and mythological symbolism and importance here. Everything in the universe, as we know, is complementary opposites. Here you have the two different dragons. The white dragon of spirit, if you like, along with the red dragon of the material earth realm. The white dragon of the soul, the red dragon of the body the white dragon of the higher mystical spiritual nature and the red dragon of the physical, sexual, instinctual, basic lust, if you like, or the, the beauty of the sacred earth body. So Merlin, and of course this is part of the double helix of the, the Ida and the Pingala we talk about in yoga. There's the two sides in terms of going up the central spine. Merlin awakened the two dragons, which is kind of like the I am Kundalini Kriya Yoga that we're talking about in our series here, isn't it? Um, to show how you can activate waking or sleeping Kundalini at the bases of your spine and move them up to the top and move them and connect them once again to the source of all that is. Now, without giving too much of Merlin's story away, we can see that eventually Merlin, as he becomes a white magician, and probably one of the greatest, wisest people of all time. Of course, through lots of failures and lots of, no judgment on him, but lots of things that, you know, he had to try out and he had to work his way up to being a good, good soul, as we all are innately. And there's lots of, you know, going to the dark side, going to the light side, and so on, as you find your way through many lifetimes in the human earth plane and human physical form. Eventually, the white and the red dragons emerged to become the green dragon of the heart, 
which is this is all sounding quite Jungian as well as kind of mythologically oriented, which is of course everything is life story and mythology, isn't it? The value of Merlin and why he's so magnetically attractive to all of us is that he shows us the way. We're all Merlins in waiting. And this has been such a powerful storyline for all the 7 billion people on the planet. For instance, the Merlin series is shown around the planet in all cultures. And it's also archetypally in another kind of format in all the Harry Potter stories and movies. Because here you have Harry Potter with the scar on his, on his forehead, and there's, there's you know, some part of his progenitors are dark and evil, and even the dark one himself, Voldemort and so on. Yet there's a whole light side of goodness and kindness there. So what is the whole meaning of why Merlin is the best archetype for our time? We all as human beings have this innate challenge and conflict and necessity to deal with the good and evil inside ourselves. We all have those good and evil dragons speaking to us. We need to, through our thinking and our feeling and our heartfeltness and our reflection and through all the failures that we have in life, to learn to become, become good people again innately good in everything we think and feel and say and do and act and all our service and sacrifice to the world. Merlin, like Harry Potter, eventually became an absolute sacrificing servant for King Arthur. And the magician inside you needs to serve the king inside you. The king who is the one who is united with the Christ consciousness, the king of kings the king of all the universe and all your human nature, your, your answer and your key to your divine human nature. Your magical side, the side that you know uses sorcery, and then eventually you will learn to just have white sorcery and all the things you think and feel and do, to create that perfect uh, ma magical magnetic person who is just becomes a the willing and happy servant of all, kind of like Jesus, Gandhi, Mandela, many, many. And you're the next one, aren't you? Of course you are. You know that in your heart as you're listening to these words of wisdom coming from your own heart. I'm simply mirroring something you're already feeling and seeing and knowing inside yourself. I hope you're feeling as excited about your life as I'm feeling about your personal life. This is the key. We know that there was no end of things that Merlin wouldn't do for King Arthur and all the Knights of the Round Table. And this is a time, and yet again, another dying civilization, just as the Celts were dying back then, about 14, 1500 years ago, were through two more cycles, and things happened in 700 year cycles for humans as a species. We're at that point, that nice little juncture, that tipping point, that turning point, where Merlin is required to come back to save the world. You need to be the hero and the heroine in your own life. And you need to embrace all the pairs of opposites in your life. That's what a Merlin does. The masculine and the feminine, the gay, the straight, the, the higher, the lower, the inner, the outer, the dark, the light, all these things, the soul, the spirit, with the earth and the physical body, to find that joyful sacredness in the heart in the heart of hearts, and that's where you're going. That's where the gem is, that's where the keys are, that's where the jewel, that's where the gold is, all these wonderful things. This is important for you, and I know that you, being the Merlin in waiting, will turn into the Merlin manifest magnificently. I'm going to read you something. You know I love these kind of um, sayings where I can put a word into... Uh, uh, a form where I'm going to read what Merlin means to me. Majestic energy revelation linked to numinosity. Majestic energy revelation linked to numinosity. That's the acronym I'm looking for here. So the majesty of your nature will come through when you activate the Merlin archetype and just say yes to it. And it's an energy revelation. It's a revelation of remembrance of the great 
soul, spirit. You are linked to and united to the divinity within your heart, self, soul, and all that is in the source of the universe. And this linked with the numinosity, which just seems to be another word for the great mystery, the mystical, the magical, whatever you want to feel it and see it as. When you feel the majesty and the magical and the mystery and the mysticism flowing and alive and awakening you, you will find your truest identity and your path here on earth. You are all Merlins, and I know that you will be manifesting this in your own way. Stay on the road to uniting all and stay on the path of the, the light, the love. The key is if you're always willing to be unconditionally loving with every friend, stranger, or enemy, you know you're on the right path. And within this, of course, you will be most loving and kind and respectful to yourself as well as to all our relations. And you know, Merlin was able to speak with all the animals and hopefully you will, again, as you re-indigenize your soul, all indigenous peoples can, can speak to the animals. And he was in charge of all the elements and co-created a better environment, a better world for all of us to sustain ourselves with the natural resources healed. And again, you can do this through your Merlin magic to reinvigorate all the elements, the water, the fire, the earth, the air, and the Akasha here on earth. Well, I hope this little introduction to Merlin, and there will be more to come in our I Am Self-Worth program online, is going to give you the first step to understanding and reactivating the Merlin magic within yourself. All love and blessings, Dr. Joseph Martin. Take best care of yourselves.